Okay, if you remember in the mystery, mystery mean activity, um, I put in a, a mystery number in for M, and you were asked to predict what the mean of that, or what that number was using a sample. And if you remember, you typed in random normal M comma 20 comma 16, meaning that for that me, uh, mean of M, you uh, at, with a standard deviation of 20, you took a sample of 16, and you found the average of all 16 of those numbers. And we're using that as a way to predict what the mystery mean was. So in this case, um, if I were to do this, I would get the number 240.79 as my prediction for what the mystery mean was. Okay. So the question is, how close is 247.9 is the mean likely to be? So to answer this question, how would the sample x bar x bar vary if we took many simple random samples of size 16 from the population. We would get a lot of different answers. As we saw in class, um, everybody did this and got a little bit different answer because you all got a different random sample. So the idea is that if we have our population with some unknown mean where we did know the standard deviation and we took a bunch of different simple random samples, all those random samples, we could create a sampling distribution which would be all possible samples and the mean, which is unknown, should match up to the, uh, to the mean of the population, the mean of our samples. But note that the standard deviation is sigma divided by the square root of n. So if you remember, for our sample, our standard deviation was 5 and not 20, because we did um, 20 divided by the square root of 16, so 20 divided by 4. So again, the idea is that the sampling distribution should closely mirror what the population is. Um, in terms of the mean, the standard deviation will be a little bit different because we did samples of 16. So in this mystery mean, we could use the value 240.79 as a point estimate. In other words, we're going to use that as a way to estimate what the mystery mean was. Um, we don't expect it to be exactly equal to that, so we need to say how accurate we think our estimate is. And so the idea is that we can use, um, for example, a 95% confidence interval by going two standard deviations above that value and two standard deviations of below that value to get an estimate or a range of values that we would think our mean would be in. And so, for example, if I um, remember the standard deviation of our sample was 5, so if I go two standard deviations above our mean, so 240.79 plus 2 times 5, that gives me a value of 250.79. And if I go 247.79 minus two standard deviations, 230.79, we would expect the mean to be somewhere between 231 and 251 about 95% of the time. If we were to do this activity many, many times, we would capture the true mean 95% of the time. So we are not saying that this particular confidence interval actually captured it, but what we're saying is that if we were to do the, repeat this activity many, many times, the true mean would be captured 95% of the time. So once again, the confidence level is the idea that if we do this activity many times, it's how many times we would actually capture the true rate. We would always use the formula estimate plus or minus margin of error to determine our confidence interval. So our estimate plus a little bit, minus a little bit, will, give, will tell us a range of values and how confident we are. Okay, And so it's really important that you understand that this is how we interpret a confidence level. A confidence level says that we are 95% confidence um, that 95% of all possible samples of a given size will capture the true parameter, which in this case we're looking for the mean. So when we write this on the AP exam, we need to write this down as far as notes. Um, to interpret a any kind of a confidence interval, whether it would be 95 or 80 or whatever percentage that you're looking at, a 95% confidence interval, we, are, we would say that we are 95% confident that the interval from our lower bound to our upper bound captures the actual value of whatever it is we're looking for. Mean or proportion is the two things that we're going to look at most often. Okay, but this is how you write a confidence interval whenever I ask you to interpret a confidence interval on the AP exam. You have to say that we are X percent, time, uh, X percent of the time we are confident that the interval will be between our two values and we will capture it that percentage of the time. So once again, the confidence level tells how how likely our method is to work. It does not tell us that a, the chance that a particular confidence level actually captures it. It just says that if we do this process over and over again, we'll capture it 20-95% of the time. 
And it doesn't matter whether we're capturing the population mean, the population proportion, or some other parameter, we would use this very method. Okay?